A troubled teen with abandonment issues develops a dangerous obsession with a high school athlete, and she'll stop at nothing until she has him all to herself. One evening, Chris solemnly watches the fireworks from the living room window. Then, his mother Maddie watches the teenager head to his room, unsure of what she can do to help him deal with his problems. The next day, Vanessa attends the wake of her late ex-boyfriend, Kale, and she kisses the photo collage by the entrance. When she sees a girl approaching the coffin, she remembers being at her own mother's funeral Funeral years ago. Suddenly, Kale's mother, Jessica, spots Vanessa, and her disdainful expression prompts the other mourners to escort the teen out of the building. Days later, Donald, a social worker, informs Vanessa that the police don't have any evidence to connect her to her ex-boyfriend's death, but she'll have to move to a different foster home in Fairview Heights. When she's hesitant to sign the papers, the social worker reminds her that she'll be of age in six months and free to live her life as she pleases. As the teen leaves, she knocks her file off the table on purpose, revealing a newspaper clipping stating that she was the one who found her mother's lifeless body when she was a child. Meanwhile, Maddie tells her son that things will get better once he returns to school, and he thanks her for patiently dealing with his attitude. Later, the woman goes jogging with her friend, Lynn, and confides that her husband, Steve, asked for a divorce. She adds that she hasn't told Chris yet because the teen still hopes that his parents are getting back together. Then, the friend asks if the school knows about her son's depression, but Maddie says Chris didn't want anyone to know so she just told them that it was a different illness. The mother states that her son needs to return to school because he risks failing junior year if he misses any more time. Later, Maddie meets with Principal Overbird to disclose that the real reason her son missed school was because he's been depressed due to his girlfriend breaking up with him. Then, she asks Coach Brody to give Chris another chance to stay on the track team despite the missed practices. Meanwhile, Vanessa unpacks her belongings in the new foster home. Then, she opens up a scrapbook containing newspaper clips of the mother and Kale's deaths. In school, Cam and Matt tell Chris everything that's happened while he was away. While passing by the cafeteria, the teen sees his ex-girlfriend Cheryl flirting with another guy. Concurrently, Principal Overbert reads Vanessa's file and learns that she is supposed to see a state-appointed psychiatrist and is advised to stay away from illegal substances and alcohol. Then, the woman asks why she's forbidden from having romantic relations. So the new student explains that having a boyfriend distracts her from schoolwork. That afternoon, Jake approaches Vanessa, and when he asks where she's from, she lies and says her family moved around a lot because her father's in the army. Suddenly, she spots Chris, so she drops the papers from her hand and starts blaming Jake for her predicament. When the student tries to help, she tells him to go away, prompting Chris to come over and help her instead. So Vanessa thanks the teen and flirtatiously asks if he could give her a tour around town since she's new. At first, the athlete says he can't because he has practice, but the new student's charming smile changes his mind. Later, Later, they hang out by the lake and Vanessa says she wants to taste his ice cream. She stares into his eyes while doing so, much to the athlete's amusement. Then, she asks if he'll get in trouble for skipping practice, and he says Cam will probably cover for him. Moments later, Chris admits that he likes Vanessa. She wonders if he has a girlfriend, so he admits that Cheryl broke up with him. The teen kisses the athlete and says his ex-girlfriend made a huge mistake letting him go. When Chris checks his watch, he says he needs to get home for dinner. Later, the athlete tells his mother all about Vanessa. Suddenly, the doorbell rings, and when Chris sees that it's the new student, she explains that she forgot her house key and her parents are working late. So Maddie invites her to join them for dinner, and she accepts. The next day, Cam and Matt are in disbelief that their friend was able to attract someone as pretty as Vanessa. After lunch, the new student sees Cheryl and threatens her with physical harm if she doesn't stay away from Chris. Suddenly, she receives a call from the psychiatrist's office, but she pretends that they called the wrong person. Later at the cemetery, Vanessa hugs her mother's gravestone and says that she would have loved Chris. While she's walking home, Lou calls her over to ask where she's been, because the police keep asking him questions about Kale's death and history of substance abuse. So Vanessa tells her friend not to worry because Donald told her the cops don't know anything. After school, the new student asks the athlete if they can hang out, but he says he has practice. However, when he sees the disappointed look on her face, he immediately changes his mind. While the couple kisses by the lake, Chris sees the scars on her arm and she says she cuts herself because it feels good. Uncomfortable with the conversation, the athlete says he needs to get home. So Vanessa says she was just joking and that she got the scars after she fell through a glass window while roughhousing with her brother Kale last summer. Meanwhile, Maddie calls Lynn to vent about her son missing a dentist's appointment. Concurrently, the new student tells Chris that 
that she's been with the same foster family since she was 10. And instead of saying that her birth mother died, she claims that the woman gave her up but kept her brother. Confused, the athlete thought she said she was with Kay last summer. So Vanessa quickly backtracks and says that she meant Kyle, her foster brother. That evening, the new student claims her foster parents locked her out of the house. So Chris asks his mother if she can stay over. Even though she thinks it's an odd situation, Maddie says she'll prepare the guest room. In the bedroom, Vanessa remembers her mother singing to her when she was a child. Then, she spots Maddie's framed picture on the dresser and places it in the drawer. Later that night, the teen sneaks into Chris's room and asks to sleep next to him because she had a nightmare. The next day, the mother wonders why her picture is inside the drawer. One morning, Lynn tells the woman that she can't let the teen treat her house like a hostel and suggests she speak to the foster parents. Weeks later, after the couple makes love, Vanessa asks if he ever thinks about death. So the athlete shares that he's thought about it whenever his alcoholic father pushed his mother around. Then, the new student confides that she's scared of dying alone, so he assures her that he'll always be with her. Suddenly, Maddie barges into the room and asks why they aren't in school. Chris says he had to finish his English essay and Vanessa says she wasn't feeling well. Eventually, the mother reminds the guest that she's supposed to stay in her room. That night during a video call, the new student tells her boyfriend that his mother was being mean and bossy. Then, Maddie ends the call because it's 3am and her son has to get up for school in a few hours. That morning, Chris asks his mother why she keeps treating him like a child, and says he can always move to his dad's place where he'll have more freedom. Because her son left his phone, the woman uses it to call Vanessa's home phone number hoping to speak to her foster parents. However, she learns that they aren't aware that she's been dating someone and that they only recently took the teen into their home. In school, the teen convinces her boyfriend to skip class to celebrate her hiring at a new job. Meanwhile, Maddie speaks to her ex-husband Steve who says he's 96 days sober. Then, she asks the man for help looking into Vanessa's background, especially after she found out that everything she's told their son was a lie. Steve tries to rationalize that maybe the teen just wanted to project that she has a stable family life. But Maddie thinks it's suspicious that she lied about being with the same foster family since she was 10, having a brother named Kale, and admitting the fact that her mother died. Before he leaves, the man says he'll do what he can, then commends his ex-wife for being a good mother. Concurrently, in the pet shop where the teen works as a photographer, she gives Chris a tour of the back room where she offers him some liquor. The athlete tries to explain that he doesn't want to start drinking because he worries his father's alcoholism might be hereditary. However, the girlfriend says breaking the rule for one night won't be a big deal. Later that night, the new student takes a razor from a small wooden box and cuts her and her boyfriend's thumbs. When he asks what she's doing, she presses their cuts together and sings the same song her mother used to sing to her. Then, Vanessa slips a ring on Chris's finger and says this means they're eternally bonded. She shares that it was her late father's and she wants the boyfriend to have it. Soon, the inebriated athlete arrives home much to his mother's disappointment. The next day, when Maddie tells her son that she doesn't want him seeing Vanessa anymore, he lies that his friends got him drunk. Then, she spots the ring and finds it strange that the girlfriend would give it to him even though they barely know each other. Annoyed, Chris says he's had enough of the woman's prying and storms off. In school, Cam points out how the athlete's been spending too much time with his girlfriend and Matt informs him that Coach Brody said he's off the team if he misses one more practice. Seconds later, he receives a text message from Vanessa asking him to skip practice but he ignores it. During practice, the athlete sees his girlfriend flirting with Jake. So he confronts her and she reasons that she had to make other plans because he blew her off. Chris explains that they're already spending too much time together and he's failing science because she makes him skip too many classes. Instead of listening to her boyfriend, Vanessa tells him to do what he wants and then walks away. Because he's unable to resist her, the couple ends up in the pet shop back room making out and smoking a spliff. She asks if he'd do anything for her, and he points out that the fact that he got kicked off the track team for her should be proof enough. Meanwhile, Steve relays everything he was able to dig up about Vanessa. He says her mother Sonia was a dancer who emigrated from Europe, married an American, and then had Vanessa. Unfortunately, the woman suffered from delusional disorder, and after her husband left them, she took her own life. Because she had no one to take care of her, Vanessa was then put into the foster care system. Steve adds that one of his contacts told him the teen suffers from similar issues to her mother, has an obsession with death, believes she can communicate with the deceased, and is a pathological liar. The man says Vanessa was involved with a grade A student soccer star named Cale Davis, her former foster brother, and he took his own life six weeks after meeting the teen. Moments later, Chris arrives and his father says they 
they need to talk about his girlfriend. The next day, the athlete breaks up with Vanessa because of all the lies she told him. When he gives back the ring, the heartbroken student says she thought he'd be different and walks away. Later, she approaches Jake in the hallway and he offers to cheer her up after seeing the tears in her eyes. While the pair make out by the trees, Vanessa makes sure Cam and Matt see them. Then, the new student goes to the theater dressing room and uses makeup to cover up the scratches on her face. Suddenly, Cheryl enters the room and she apologizes for threatening her weeks ago. However, the blonde doesn't want to listen to her, so Vanessa says they can at least agree that Chris is a terrible boyfriend, amusing Cheryl. To the athlete's dismay, he sees his two exes forming a friendship. That afternoon, he calls Vanessa, begs her to talk to him, and says he still loves her. As she listens to his words, the teen remembers Kale saying the same thing things. Later, she suffers a mental episode in the pet shop and calls Chris to tell him that she wants to take her own life because she always ends up alone. So the athlete runs to the pet shop to console the teen. After she calms down, Vanessa implies that Jake took advantage of her. He suggests calling the police, but she says they can't because they'll transfer her to another town. Eventually, the new student secretly sprinkles a mysterious substance in Chris's drink and says they should make a racy video to cheer her up. Minutes later, she records her boyfriend while he experiences the effects of the substance. Meanwhile, Maddie sees that her son isn't in his room, and then finds Vanessa's work address on the cork board. Concurrently, the teen places a chain around Chris's wrist and makes him tell the camera how much he loves her. Suddenly, Maddie arrives, helps her son up to his feet, and takes him home. The next day, the woman calls Lynn to tell her what happened last night. Moments later, Detective Harcroft asks to speak to Chris because Vanessa accused him of hurting and taking advantage of her. In the station, Maddie tries to explain that the teen incapacitated her son so she had to come get him. When the detective asks about the scratches on Vanessa's face, Chris says he went to the pet shop so they could drink and talk and he doesn't remember anything else. However, the cop counters how convenient it is that he suddenly has amnesia after his girlfriend accuses him. The man believes he stopped by the pet shop and took advantage of her because she dumped him for Jake. When the athlete continues denying the accusation, Detective Harcroft reveals that Cam and Matt are prepared to provide statements backing up Vanessa's claim that she dumped him for Jake. Then, the cop receives a call from the lab informing him that they found male DNA in the victim, and they'll be performing a swab on Chris to determine if it's his. After seeing her son distraught and confused, Maddie hugs him and promises they'll figure out what to do. In school, Vanessa tells the other students that the athlete took advantage of her, garnering their sympathy. Later, Cam and Matt avoid speaking to Chris because their parents told them so. Then, he sees all the other students staring at him and he realizes that the news has already spread. At home, Maddie receives several anonymous calls berating her for what her son presumably did. Then, the teen calls her into his room where he shows her an email from a person threatening to kill him for what he did. The next day, the principal tells the mother that she already spoke to Vanessa who maintains that she isn't involved in any smear campaign against Chris. In school, all the other students avoid sitting next to the athlete, and he sees his ex-girlfriend smiling and laughing with Cheryl. That evening, the new student calls the teen and gaslights him into believing that he did take advantage of her since he acts just like his father whenever inebriated. In the living room, Chris posits the possibility that he did hurt Vanessa because he might be a violent drunk just like his father. So Maddie assures her son that he isn't capable of such things. Later while the athlete takes a walk in the park, Lou and his friends attack him. Meanwhile, Detective Harcroft informs the mother that although Chris's DNA matched the one found in the victim, they also found more DNA belonging to another male. This means Vanessa lied when she said Chris was the only person she was with that night. Then, Maddie receives a call from the hospital regarding her son. Soon, the doctor tells the woman that the athlete will be fine aside from some bruises and an injured knee. Moments later, the patient tells Officer Tate that he didn't recognize any of the attackers last night. That evening, Maddie barges into the pet shop to confront the teen, but Vanessa says she shouldn't threaten a high school student. Days later, Officer Tate asks to see the teen's phone, but she pretends that it's broken. Despite the messy situation, Chris still talks to his ex-girlfriend through a video call. She says she feels bad that he got jumped while he was on his way to see her, and he tells her how much he misses her. Soon, Maddie tracks down the teen's social worker, but because he can't legally disclose Vanessa's history, he gives the woman the names of people from her past. 
Jessica, the teen's former foster parent and Kale's mother, says Vanessa played mind games and spread nasty lies about her son. While looking at photographs, Maddie points out how much Kale resembles Chris. The woman says she begged Kale to end the relationship, but the teen always managed to convince him that she was the bad guy. She says her son started abusing substances and eventually hanged himself. Then, Maddie sees a picture of Kale wearing the same ring Vanessa gave Chris. Later through a phone call, Marjorie tells the woman that her son Randy took his own life weeks after meeting Vanessa and that he also received the same ring. Fearing Chris might suffer the same fate, Maddie calls the police to the house but he is no longer there. When Officer Tate arrives, the woman tells her that Vanessa incapacitates her victims with a substance and goads them into taking their own lives. Even though the mother wants to accompany the cop, the authorities advise her to stay put in case they come back. Meanwhile, the clueless athlete thinks he and his girlfriend are in the park for a picnic. Concurrently, Maddie opens her son's computer and sees that Vanessa told him to take a cab to their meeting place. So the woman calls the cab company and learns that the driver took Chris to Whitefall Park. At the park, the teen sneakily mixes the substance into a bottle of soda. In the car, Maddie calls Lynn and asks her to call the police to head to Whitefall Park. Later, Chris starts feeling the effects of the substance, so Vanessa takes out the blade from the wooden box and cuts her wrist. Then, she hands the blade to the athlete and tells him to do the same thing. As he slashes his arm, Vanessa takes out her phone to record a video. Intending to leave Chris as he perishes, the teen says he's just like all the other men in her life. Eventually, the athlete passes out from the blood loss, so Vanessa takes the ring from his finger. Suddenly, Maddie arrives and pushes the deranged teen away from her son. Vanessa grabs the woman, but she hits the attacker's face with a wooden box. Because the teen wants to stop her from saving Chris, Maddie pushes her to the ground and strangles her. Seconds later, Officer Tate arrives to stop the fight. Then the paramedics immediately attend to the injured athlete. Three months later, Chris has fully recovered from all his injuries, and he looks forward to attending his father's wedding with his friends. Meanwhile, in a mental institution, Vanessa flirts with Mark, a male nurse. Then, the deranged teen shows him a picture of her father, a tall man with dark brown hair, revealing that she targets victims who eerily resemble the person who left her when she was a child. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.